David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a brand new pen from Penlux. Uh, this is a model which is just hitting retailers in the States right now and is called the Masterpiece Delgado Beta. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Delgado, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Penlux for providing the pen you will see today for review. Uh, in the United States, Penlux is being distributed by Itoya, who are the same folks who distribute Sailor in the U.S., so you're beginning to see a, a bit more exposure for the brand here in the West. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Penlux brand, it is a company based out of Taiwan. They have been creating private label projects for over 15 years, and like six or seven years ago, they decided to create pens under their own brand. I've reviewed a couple of pens from them in the past. Uh, first was this one here. It is called the Metallic. Uh, it's kind of funny. When this pen was introduced at the DC show a number of years ago, it was originally called the Metallica, uh, but they changed the name to avoid any confusion with the heavy metal band of the same name. Um, I've also reviewed a couple of different versions of the Masterpiece. Most recently, this Blue Wave, which I liked a lot. Um, but what I have here for you today is we're going to take a closer look at the Masterpiece Delgado. The pen arrives in this box. It has the Penlux logo on the top, which peeks through the little window. The, on the box, the top lifts off, and it does lift off. There we go. And there's a couple of things in here. There is a use and care guide. Uh, there is a certificate of authenticity that's kind of nice and uh, debossed. And then we have something else which I've commented on in previous Penlux reviews. There is some important information on this translucent piece of plastic. Uh, it basically explains that you can remove the nib and feed, but removing the section or piston knob will damage your pen beyond repair. Uh, putting it on this plastic is a smart move because it's different. For me personally, when I see uh, like a use and care guide and stuff like that, I tend to throw them aside and not pay too much attention to them. But having this information presented to me in a different manner made me stop and take a look at it. And the information it contains is very important. So I'll give Penlux credit for presenting that important information in a way that gets the uh, attention of the customers. At least it was a way to get my attention. And then we have the pen. This is the Penlux Masterpiece Delgado, specifically the Beta model. This is the first in their Delgado Creature Collection, which will offer a range of pens inspired by the natural beauty of creatures in nature. In Spanish, Delgado means thin. And you can see here, in comparison to the original masterpiece, the Delgado is indeed smaller and thinner. Uh, but there are additional differences uh, other than just size. And I'll detail some of those differences during the size comparisons. Uh, as an aside, while, while I did grow up in Southern California and know a fair amount of Spanish, uh, I am by no means fluent, but Delgado is the masculine version of the word thin, with Delgada being the feminine version of the word. Um, since a pen, la pluma, is feminine, uh, I wondered if it was contradictory to have this model called the Delgado. Should it be the Delgada? Um, if you're a Spanish speaker, let me know in the comments if that's the case, or if it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, maybe it's fine to have the masculine be the name of the pen, but if you were calling this pen thin, then you would use the feminine. Uh, maybe you would end up saying, uh, like, Pluma Delgado de Gada, if you were saying this was a thin pen, or that the, the, the Delgado was thin. Um, I know that sounds a little bit silly, but then again, there are plenty of silly things about English. Okay, Back to actually taking a look at this pen. This is the beta, which is named for the beta fish, which are also known as Siamese fighting fish. Uh, this one here is red, but they come in a rainbow of colors, and they are very common pets. Uh, the pen is made from a PMMA resin. Uh, the glistening deep blue is complemented by stark black and bright yellow, giving this pen a bit of a scaled effect. I've said this before, but the crushed resin look isn't typically my favorite. Um, that's where the resin is created and then chopped up and then reformed. Um, for this particular pen, I felt that that technique actually served a distinct purpose of resembling the look and coloring of a betta fish, and it does a good job of doing so. With the nature of this material, no two pens are going to look alike. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It is rounded and transitions into the gold-plated clip. 
The clip is wide at the top and tapers down till you reach the wheel. The wheel makes the uh, clip easy to operate in material of varying sizes. The cap angles up until about half an inch from the end where it transitions into the wide cap band. Uh, it's gold plated as well and stamped with the Penlux name. It angles down slightly to a very small step down to the barrel. The barrel is straight for about the first inch before it tapers down at a fairly even angle until you reach another gold band which signifies the beginning of the piston knob and the end of that knob is rounded. The cap twists off with two and a half rotations and underneath we have a gold plated stainless steel Yovo number no. 6 nib which is available in fine, medium, broad and a 1.1 stub. Uh, at an additional cost, there are also options for a 14 karat gold flex nib as well as an 18 karat gold nib in either fine or medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a slight flare and then angles up at a steady angle until you reach the threads. Uh, there's then a straight portion before a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, this section isn't the longest, uh, even though I tend to grip a section near the end. I do find my grip rests a bit on these threads, but I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable. Uh, I find this pen plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post, and it does post deeply and securely. With the tapered design of this clip band, it minimizes the step down from the cap to the barrel. Sometimes that transition can rub against the inside of your hand, and especially if it's sharp, then it could be rather uncomfortable. But with this tapered design, that transition on this pen is rather smooth. Uh, the cap is rather light, and I don't feel that posting makes the pen unwieldy or improperly balanced. Um, while overall this isn't the heftiest pen, uh, what weight it does have is well distributed, even when it's posted. The Penlux Masterpiece Delgado Beta is available from a number of retailers and sells for $136. I feel that's a very reasonable price for what you receive here with this pen. It's very well constructed with quality parts. Um, it has an interesting themed resin, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Penlux will be releasing next in their Creature series. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, some size comparisons where I'll show you the difference between this Delgado and the standard masterpiece, as well as provide a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Penlux Masterpiece Delgado Beta. Um, and I will say that, especially looking at the pen as a whole, it does do a good job of giving you the impression of a Beta fish. In regard to some size comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to the standard Masterpiece. Um, you can see here on the Masterpiece that the band is different, uh, as well as the clip is slightly different. It's more tapered on the newer model. And that the dimensions are a little bit different as well. So that this one here, the uh, Delgado, isn't just basically the same pen but smaller. It's really a different design. Uh, in regard to the other Penlux that I have, this is what it looks like with the Metallic. And this is what it looks like with a Lamy All-Star. In regard to some other pens, here's what it looks like with a Mont Blanc Starwalker. Uh, and then here is a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. This is the, uh, the Ocean Sunrise. And then finally, here it is with a Narwhal... Uh, Nautilus. This is the uh, Caramel Macchiato, I believe. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the All Star, and here it is with the regular Masterpiece, and here it is with the Narwhal. Here we go with the writing sample for the Penlux Masterpiece. Delgado. And this is the Beta. This is a broad stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using today is from Papier Plume.
and it is their number 13. This is what the ink looks like. It's a kind of a nicer, darker blue-green. Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to the Diamine Audenil. And then here it is with the Mont Blanc's Blue Hour Twilight Blue. This is what the bottle looks like when it arrived. It came with this little mask on it, which was very cute. Uh, this was their mystery ink. Uh, if you haven't checked out this review that I did of this, this was one of the more fun reviews that I've done uh, to where they released this ink and you purchased it without knowing what the color was. And so I had to do a review where I wanted to review the ink, but not show the ink. So I'll put a link to it in the notes below. If you want to see how I review a uh, an ink without actually showing the ink, then you uh, you can see how I did it there. It was a lot of fun to put together. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I do find this broad Yovo nib to write very well. Um, it's fairly smooth. It is rather stiff. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. But I do find that the ink flow is rather decent on this nib uh, in regard to reverse writing. It is a little bit on the scratchy side, but in regard to fast writing, just a second, I got a little bit of... There we go. A little bit of paper got caught in the nib. In regard to some fast writing. The nib had no problems in keeping up. So there we have the Penlux Masterpiece Delgado Beta. Uh, like I mentioned previously, I'm looking forward to seeing what other pens they come out with uh, in this creature's lineup. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.